I'm struck by the way the Senate Intelligence Committee described um, why they didn't know what Kalimnik had done with that data. They said, basically, listen, we, we don't know what his communications are. He used, they implied that he was using, you know, communication security, implying, I, I think, that he was using encrypted channels. Um, and so therefore it was unknowable what he had done with the information. If the U.S. government now is sort of confidently and uncomplicatedly asserting that they know what 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 Kalimnik did with that information, does that mean that they've developed new information or that some part of the Biden administration is willing to disclose this information when under the previous president, even though they knew this, they weren't willing to share it, even with the Senate Intelligence Committee? How How new is this? How much of a new capability does this reflect? So I think you're hitting on the most important question here and the thing that I really want to know, which is when did the U.S. government figure this out? Is this something that they've Mm -hmm. known for years that would put it back during the Trump administration? Or is that something that was recently developed? We know that Trump administration officials were very hesitant to do anything on Russia because of the way because of Trump's posture and anger on this issue. So where did this come from? When when did this change? I don't you know, I I was looking at statements earlier from folks like, you know, Andrew Weissman about this. It's clear that the Mueller folks did not know about this. But when did this come up and how did it come up? And was the FBI continuing to investigate Kalimnik even after the prosecutions in 2018 and 2019? under Trump, when Trump didn't want any of this stuff going on, that to understand that would give us a greater sense of what this intelligence is, uh, how old it is, and in obviously its importance. And Mike, is have you ever gotten any clearer sense throughout this whole saga, since we've all been looking at this question for so long, have you ever had any clearer sense of what exactly was in that data? about what exactly was communicated. It was Paul Manafort had the information. It was internal non-public data about strategy and polling within the Trump campaign. He directed Rick Gates to share it with Kalimnik. Senate Intelligence Committee says that on multiple occasions he wanted to convey internal Trump data to Kalimnik. Have we ever had any clearer view of what exactly they gave them? The reason, of course, that's important is you'd want to know how valuable it would have been to Russian intelligence in in in, in targeting their attacks. The reporting in the past has shown that some of the polling data was stuff that was publicly available at the time. And Rick Gates tonight putting out a statement saying that this information was was there was nothing really significant in what was being passed to Kalimnik. Um, I understand why we focus on what was it that was passed in this channel, because it's the one thing that we know that was passed. But. What I think we have to step back and look at is that there was a channel. There was a a line that went from the Trump campaign to Russian intelligence. Now, maybe the Trump campaign did not fully appreciate that. Maybe the information that went wasn't that significant. But we know that this channel existed. And it's some would say it's hard to believe that this is the only thing that moved through that channel, given the amount of back and forth that Manafort had with Kalimnik. So I think the existence of the channel is more important than what we know was passed in the channel. New York Times reporter Michael Schmidt, that is such a smart point. Um, and the way this news came to the fore today uh, in, a, in a U.S. government announcement about 2020 election interference, when this was not about that, this is about 2016, uh, implies that they are trying to get this out there um, in part because they're trying to put a spotlight on something that is uh, at least the start of an answer to a very key question. Mike, thanks for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.